Now we turn to the Gospel, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verses 13 through 21. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbiter over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. And then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. Dear God, we pray for your blessings upon this word. Help us to understand the scriptures for today and how they apply to our lives. Lord, bless us with inspiration and with insight. In Jesus' name, amen. Gospel lesson for today is about a rich man who receives a bountiful harvest, making him even more rich. He has a problem, however that he does not have a place to store all this bounty that he has. So, what do you do when the barns that you have used to store your bounty in are too small? Well, this rich man decides to tear down his existing barns, uh, which are too small, and to build bigger barns. And I'm not sure why he had to tear down the old barns to build bigger barns, but on the same site, but I don't know why. Anyway, he does. And he's feeling good about the situation. With his great fortune, he's looking forward to a great retirement and a life of ease, of eating, drinking, and being merry, just like so many of you in your retirement. But unlike you, this rich man has a bigger problem than building bigger barns. He does not know it, but Jesus says that his life will be demanded of him. And that very night, in other words, he's going to die. Jesus says, but God said to the rich man, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things that you have prepared, whose will they be? And then Jesus makes the ultimate point of the parable. So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich in God. The rich man's ultimate problem was not that he was not rich enough in possessions or that he did not uh, build bigger barns fast enough. The ultimate problem for him was that he was rich in material things. And he was not rich in godly things. He was not rich in his relationship with God. God called the man a fool because he prepared for expanding his wealth and having a good time on earth, but he did not prepare for a life with God. The man's life was all about bigger barns rather than bigger faith. Yes, the man was all about living an earthly life of ease instead of living an eternal life of serving God. As the psalm for today says, Truly, no ransom avails for one's life. There is no price one can give to God for it. Fool and dolt perish together and leave their wealth to others. The rich man in the parable had invested in wealth and not in God, and no amount of earthly goods or wealth can buy God. The rich man had no ransom for his life. He was a fool who left his wealth to someone else. As the Apostle Paul wrote in his first letter to Timothy, you cannot bring anything into the world 
and you cannot take anything out of it. So material wealth cannot be brought into this world and it cannot be taken out of it either. God and God's kingdom work with a different currency and a different economy than the one on earth of money and possessions. Before he uh, tells the parable of the rich man, Jesus tells the crowd. He warns them, take care, be on guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. On the subject of material possessions and money, the Old and New Testaments are very much in agreement. In Proverbs 11, it reads, Whoever trusts in riches will fall. Contrary to the wisdom of Proverbs and Jesus, many people trust in riches to make themselves fulfilled and content. They pursue the accumulation of the abundance of possessions to bring themselves happiness. Many of us would like to try that experiment. The pursuit of accumulating material goods stems from an internal fear that a person will not have enough to survive. It is an insecurity that there is not enough to go around. So one feels compelled to gather, to collect, to accumulate as much as they can in order to ensure their survival. For the rich, this fear and insecurity can become excessive to the point that they must have it all so that they cannot leave it to anyone else. But for many wealthy people, being excessive in their accumulation of things stems from a need for social recognition. Point being that the one with the most possessions is the one who has the most social status. Or as the saying goes, the one with the most toys wins. The saying betrays that it is a childish insecurity and fear and some people never free themselves from childhood fears. The sandbox gets bigger and more technical as we get older, but most people are still playing in the sandbox. The Old Testament. In the Old Testament, God tells us in Psalm 10 that the Lord abhors covetousness. To covet means to desire to possess something uh, or someone eagerly. That belongs to someone else, and oftentimes in an inappropriate and wrong way. God was so strong about not coveting that God made it one of the Ten Commandments. Commandment number ten says, do not covet anything that is your neighbor's. Well, why not? Why not covet what someone else has and take it? You know, isn't that the right of the strong and the smart? To take what they want? For that matter, why not desire to be rich? You know, what's wrong with that? Isn't it good to be rich? Doesn't that show God's favor and blessings? You know, I've, I've heard TV preachers say that. Some TV preachers and others say that accumulating wealth is a sign that God loves you. So the more you get, the more God loves you. This is the same argument that the Pharisees had and Jesus condemned them for it. The person who wrote the book of Ecclesiastes expressed an answer to this question that I've raised, that after he had accumulated a great deal of wealth and riches, this, this very rich man of Ecclesiastes concluded that the person who loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with his income. The abundance of a rich person permits that person no sleep. Isaiah 56 says this about rich people. They are dogs with mighty appetites. They never have enough. Each seeks their own gain. For all that money and possessions can do, the Bible tells us that they can never truly satisfy a person. Many people want to find out for themselves, as I said, so they keep trying to get more and more money, but the more they get, the more money they want, because money does not really satisfy the soul. We keep trying to fill our need with something that does not ultimately satisfy us, so we keep wanting more and more of it. Accumulating money and possessions is like eating and eating food that has no nourishment. We eat and we eat, but we starve to death. 
we starve spiritually, soul dies. There is a real need for a person to have material resources up to a point. Uh, some say the line is 50000 others say $75,000, but after that certain point, after that point, a, a point where someone has enough to meet their needs and a little bit of comfort, all the rest is greed. Desiring more money beyond a certain point turns a person's attitude toward money from one of necessity to one of desire and love. And the Apostle Paul writes in 1 Timothy 6 that the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Not money is the root of evil, but all kind, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Oftentimes, in the pursuit of accumulating money, a person makes many moral and ethical compromises. Greedy people develop an attitude of the ends, that of accumulating money for themselves justifies whatever means they use to get it. That leads to all kinds of evil. And Jesus said, what does it profit a person to gain the whole world and lose their soul? A person could have all the wealth of the world, but never be satisfied. And if you neglect your soul, well, you starve that which needs great care. Wealth is the junk food of the soul. It may fill you for a moment, but you are never nourished and never truly satisfied. Jesus warned us in Matthew 6, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And no one can serve two masters. You cannot serve God and wealth. The pursuit of wealth leaves, always leaves a person hungry and unsatisfied. Because it does not really actually, you know, meet the actual need of a human soul. We human beings have more than just physical needs. We have emotional needs. We have spiritual needs. Jesus said that it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Why is that? Because a rich person is not focused on heavenly things or godly things or the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is described as a place where people care about one another and help each other to get ahead, while rich people focus on getting ahead for themselves. The kingdom of God is described as a place where souls share with each other, while rich people tend to keep things for themselves. The psychological fact is that rich people think differently than the rest of us. Studies have shown that rich people look at the world, themselves, and others differently than the rest of the population. Self-made millionaire Stephen Seabold spent 26 years interviewing the richest people in the world, and he wrote a book entitled, How Rich People Think. Now, his point was to get you to think like a rich person so you'll get rich. But here's some of his findings. For example, a big one, is that rich people believe it is their right to be wealthy, while the rest of us believe that wealth is a privilege. So rich people believe that anyone can be wealthy if they try, while average people believe that being wealthy is only for the lucky few. And if being rich is a person's right, well then it follows that paying taxes and having restrictions and making money is seen as things hindering their right to make money. I think that Jesus was big on sharing and condemned people who kept their wealth to themselves. Remember the parable of Lazarus and the, and the rich man in Luke's gospel? Yeah, the rich man did not share and wound up in hell. Both Jesus and Paul talked about stewardship and the obligation to give. So I conclude that Jesus and Paul would consider wealth a privilege not a right. All we have is a gift from God, not a right we earn. Rich people believe that they are more savvy than others. Savvy, while the rest of us believe that being rich comes from being smarter. 
No, rich people are street smart, not academic smart. Because if they were academic smart, you know, Cheryl here would be a billionaire. You know, we know he's smart. So it takes more. It's street savvy. Rich people believe making money may not be easy, but it's simple. While the average person believes making money is complicated. Rich people believe that money is made through thinking. Well, average people believe money is made through time and labor. Rich people make money through creative problem solving, while average people think they get money through hard work and long hours. Rich people believe that making wealth involves a team, while the masses believe making wealth is an individual effort, and so on. These are just a few of what's in the book. Being wealthy is not sinful in and of itself. How a person accumulates wealth can be sinful, can be, if it is by immoral and unethical practices. A person still needs to be moral and ethical in accumulating wealth. According to Jesus, a person still needs to consider how what they do affects others. The biggest problem, however, as Jesus indicates in the parable of the rich man and his barns, is that rich, the rich tend to be rich in things, but they are poor in their relationship with God and godly things. In other words, the thinking, attitudes, and values of the rich are not in accord with God and God's kingdom. Not true for all, but it's a blanket statement. But if this is the case, then bigger, barn, bigger barns won't save us. Only a life dedicated to serving God and doing God's will can. Everything belongs to God, our wealth, our barns, and our souls. They all belong to God. Let's think about that. <laughs>